What's up guys, welcome back to another interview and today I've got an extremely special guest who has one of the most unbelievable stories. I'm bringing on Racer Botkin from Texas, a true cowboy, but what he's been able to do is absolutely incredible. So I started working with Racer a couple of months ago. Within the first month after dropping just a handful of YouTube videos, he put multiple seven figures of deals into escrow and within the first week, we generated 90 leads for him. And with his script, the first lead that he called, he ended up closing into a deal. All of that happened within just a matter of a couple weeks. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive deep into Racer's story, what he's been doing differently in order to separate himself from the pack. And I'm going to mention two things before we get into the interview. Number one, if you want the free masterclass where I show you exactly how we generated Racer 90 leads in just one week, as well as the exact strategy we use for his YouTube videos to attract multiple seven figures of business within a matter of a few weeks, drop a comment below and I'll send you that masterclass. Otherwise, the second thing I want to mention is I have time stamped the interview below, so I want to be respectful of your time. If you want to skip to any point in the interview that's specific to what you care about, feel free to do so. Otherwise, you need to listen to what Racer says because his script is incredible. Some of the things he shares with you are the most insightful things if you take a moment in order to understand them. So he's an incredibly inspirational guy, and let's get straight into the interview. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. And this is one near and dear to my heart with one of my good friends, Racer Botkin, down in Texas. Now, this is a guy that I met when we both got flown into um, we, where did we go, Racer? We went to the Red X um, headquarters in Utah. Yeah. And it yeah. was incredible to meet this guy, somebody that's a polar opposite from a first glance view, but incredibly similar when you break it down to personality. So Racer and I have been working together and we've done some incredible things, but the, the, how genuine this gentleman is and how much you care is something that I've honestly never seen to this capacity in the real estate industry in my life. So I'm really honored to have you on here. So Racer, what's up, man? Hey, man, it's so good to be here. And you're right. Um, when we met in that airport, um, you walked up, you were slick and dressed to the nines and swole and, uh, and, and tall. And, uh, <laughs> and I was standing there thinking, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? It was, it was funny. It was, uh, it was humbling because I thought they, they don't really realize that I'm just an old country boy from East Texas, you know? Uh, yeah. But over the next, well, actually, we didn't get but about 24 hours because I like to diet out there. Um, <laughs> I've never really been sick a day in my life. And they took us out to this really nice restaurant um, up in the mountains. And, uh, and I thought I got food poisoning, but my appendix was trying to rupture. And so the next morning, my welcome to town was, was done at a, at a hospital. And uh, so... Um, but it's so cool because it's something that I was talking to about a friend of mine the other day. Um, alignment is maybe one of the most precious gifts that we have in life. And for those of you that are super aligned with your wife, you know what that means. Um, uh, 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 the, right, the right guy with the right girl creates something that is just unbelievable. And when it's wrong, it's unbelievable too, right? Um, but, but me and you, in that real short window of time, we had an alignment that, that said, he's different than I'm him, but at the core, fundamentally, we're the same. And 100%. so, and so I'm, I'm thankful, because like, you're like a brother to me. Um, like you're Christ. young enough to be like a son, um, but, but I mean, you're, you're more parallel in my relationship with like a brother. And, um, I, I, that's something that I tell people all the time whenever they ask me about our business. They go, how do y'all, how y'all do what y'all do? And I go, man, we're just aligned, right? Um, we Thanks, found honey. people that look and think and feel and believe, um, like we do. And 100%. then we, just, and we embrace that. Um, we don't take from it. We add to it. We try to, we try to sow into them so that they have something to sow back into us. And, uh, and that's what we've done. And so it's been really cool, you know? I mean, that's kind of a romantic picture of how that happened. And I don't have a bromance or nothing, but I mean, um, it's, yeah. I mean, I feel like, I mean, you're, you're in Canada and I'm in Texas. Um, that's two different countries. 
um, the energy the United States is between us, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, I think it's, I I think like it's incredible. I feel like you're my next door neighbor, you know? I agree. And I think it's, it's so inspiring because you and I have such amazing deep thoughts and, and conversations about big visions. And we've started putting some of those into action and it's starting to flourish and seeing what's going to come in the future. But before we get into some of that stuff, I'd love to just paint a picture of who you are because you are a Southerner. You're as cowboy as it gets and you used to be a rodeo announcer and now you're in real estate. So what kind of happened there? What, what brought you from world renowned rodeo announcer to real estate? Well, so I, I used to lean into the fact that um, because I preferred to be a country boy, I would, I would put on a front that I just wasn't real smart. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so I would tell people I was too lazy to work and too scared to steal. So I made a living talking. Truth of the matter is, though, any business that you have that has any success at all, um, you've either decided to work or it doesn't last very long. And, uh, and, and the rodeo industry was really good to me. Um, I made some huge mistakes. I made some great gains. I met a lot of great people. I saw every state in the country. I, I did the Canadian finals with the PBR. I got to spend some time up in your country. Greatest stakes on the planet um, are in Canada. Um, because y'all breed, y'all feed barley and not corn. Nobody knows yeah. that. But that's the truth. Um, anyway, it was it was awesome. So, so what what actually happened is I uh, had announced rodeos for about twenty um, five years, and uh, and that's a cool job because you work on the weekends and you're off all week, um, but you're on a plane every Wednesday and every Sunday, and nothing against planes, but. Um, that narrows your window of how much you can invest in what's really important, which is your home. Um, and, and so I met this girl in my dreams and, uh, and, and I wanted to be a great husband. I didn't want to just be a husband, you know, um, I had been just a husband before and it wasn't very good. And so I told her, I said, I'm going to back off this announcing deal, son, and I'm going to try to find something that I like. And uh, truth of the matter is, I turned over a bunch of rocks, and most of them just had worms under them. I didn't like any of it. Um, and, and, and I had a really cool coach that said, uh, not, a, not a real estate coach, more of a lifetime coach. And I asked him, I said, how do I keep my wife's attention um, so that I don't ever have to go through what some people go through? Um, and he said, you figure out what your wife's been dreaming about since she's a little girl, and you go get it. And you won't have to look for her because she'll be with you. Cause she'll be, you'll be looking for what she wants. And so I asked those questions and she really likes the design, the flip process of houses. And, uh, it would have been easier. She said she wanted a puppy. Um, but, uh, so I did some research and a good friend of mine said, you know, if you get in real estate, you'll learn the market and then learning the market, you'll learn what sells and what doesn't sell and what matters and what doesn't matter. Um, and if you're any good at it, you'll make enough money that she can afford to fund what she wants to do. And so I approached her and she said, yeah, I'm with you. We'll go do it. And so uh, a year ago in April, um, we started real estate. And for the first four or five months, I felt like I was a duck out of water. Um, I did not, um, I knew a lot about a lot and nothing about real estate. And, uh, and all of a sudden in one swift move, um, I was with the right guy at the right time who was a, a legit coach that had a lot of things in common with me. He had been self-employed as somewhat of a star, you know, athlete and, and moving from notoriety to work was a hard deal for him too. And, and uh, feeling like he was somebody, whether he was or not, he felt like it. And same way with me and uh, to, just having to go do the grind, you know? And, uh, and so all in one smooth motion, he helped me understand that my business would grow to the extent that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I had all the foundation. It took a great parents. I was raised in a good home. Um, I'm from the South. So church is a big part of our belief system for some people. That's not, but I mean, um, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just saying that that, that was part of the foundation of who we were, how we were made. Um, we were, we were raised to treat people the way we want to be treated. Um, but he, but he put some fertilizer on that and said, how about we go the extra mile with that? How about we say, um, we don't just treat them the way we'd want to be treated. How about we treat them 
the way we would want somebody to treat our children. I bet we treat them the way we'd want somebody to treat our mom. Because that's different. Mm -hmm. If you can treat me good, that's okay. You treat my mama good, that's a big deal. Um, you treat my mama bad, it's a really big deal. Big time. Um, how about we treat people differently? Um, and I thought, man, that sounds like a motion that I don't know how to move in. And he goes, you're right. Because that comes from your core. It doesn't come from your extremities. You can't learn how to be good out here with your hands and your feet. You have to learn that inside. And yeah. so let's work on that. So here's a guy that's a real estate coach. He's supposed to teach me how to sell houses. And he has got all up in my personal business. Um, and so for the next probably 30 days, we talked about who are you and who do you want to be and who do you really like, you know, and who likes you. And so after about 30 days of some true self evaluation, which some of it was not fun. Um, then I started real estate over and, and we sold about 3 million in the next six months. Um, 20 deals right at us, uh, 17, 20, I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, and then this year we were able to attract some great people instead of having to go recruit them. And, uh, and we're, you know, at about, I don't know, 6 million is what we got in escrow and we've had to go through a pandemic and all kinds of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, the money don't even matter. Now, yeah. we, we're finding out right now that you can have all the money in the world. If you can't leave the house, it don't matter. Uh, but we got people that like us and we like them, you know? And so we added to that another ingredient called Mike Sherrard. <laughs> and uh, because we had a good relationship and I called and I said, Hey, what can I do to help people feel better about the moves that they're making, the lives that they're living, the situation that they're enduring, um, without them having to be sitting in front of me across my desk. And, uh, and so then we, we, we created a plan, right? And, uh, and yeah, so here we are. And, uh, that's it's, good. yeah, yeah. It's been amazing to see how things have transpired because you had such a strong foundation that as soon as you had a plan in front of you and you executed on it, it just came to life. And it's one of those things that so many people have the same situation as you where they've got the foundation built, they're given a plan and they never execute and wonder why they aren't getting the results. And you just executed on something incredibly not difficult. And it's, you're already starting to see the rewards coming from that, yeah. which is so inspiring. And, you know, I think even though we'll get into Facebook, I think talking about what you've done with video is so important because it aligns with what you just alluded to is you found out who you are and all that you've done is shared that. And that's transpired into business. So we've only put out, um, you know, a couple handfuls of videos for you. And that's already starting to bring to life what we've always planned on doing. So why don't you walk through what's what that's done in terms of your aspect of video and implementing that into your business? So it's hard for people. So if, if business is just business, then you have to compete just like if you go online and you type in um, hey, you know, I need a new widget, whatever that is. And there's going to be 20 people that sell that same widget, and they're all going to have a variance in price. Um, and what you really don't know is their variance in service, but you can check reviews and figure that stuff out. Um, but at the end of the day, most people will make that decision based on price. Most of them. Yeah. Um, very few people will pay 10 or 20% more for an item just because the company has great service. Um, now, if it's a car, you might pay more because you know you can get it worked on. But on a widget, you know, it's, it's hard to get done. And uh, my phone's going crazy, sorry. Um, so what you was able to do for me uh, with your company, um, which I'm so grateful for, is we were able to, to let people see that, um, yeah, we sell houses. Lots of people do. And. Yeah. Really short. We sell houses. Lots of people do. Um, now let's talk about you. Why are you moving? What matters to you? Where are you going to live? 
What kind of school you want your kids to go to? Do you need a good doctor? Do you got dogs? Do you need a kennel? Are you going to need a vet? What about your parents? Are they going to need some kind of assisted living at some point whenever they move here? How's that going to be? Um, what's your transit look like? Do you like to drive? Do you not like to drive? How much grass do you really want to mow? You know, I mean, that's the difference between selling a widget and selling a life. And, uh, and you can't do that on paper with a resume because people can't see you, feel you, touch you, think about who you are. And, and by doing those YouTube videos, we're able to say, hey, listen, you know what? Tyler, Texas is a great place to live. And here's why. Um, they got places called wineries. Um, if you're from California, you understand that. Um, and they're cool. And I know I don't look like the kind of guy you're going to see in a winery, but I like the way my wife looks in a winery. So we're going. Um, but they also have this cool deal that y'all don't know nothing about called barbecue. And East Texas barbecue is as good as it gets. And now you got to wear something that you don't mind messing up. Because barbecue sauce on a white shirt will mess you up. Um, but then we got this other cool deal called community where like on Friday night, you just as well not play anything else because the whole community is going to be at the football game. Mm -hmm. And, and so now all of a sudden they're like, okay, well this guy sells houses too, but this guy knows about our life. He knows our, he, it's like, he knows our son plays football. It's like, he knows that my, my, you know what I mean? Um, you can't do that without a video. And so we've been able to, take that alignment with somebody like you that said, um, it's not something we're going to think about, something we're going to do. And then take that ingredient that was from my coach, Dusty, that said who you are is going to really impact what you do more so than what you do will impact who you are. Yep. And so we took that ingredient that we got from one location and we got another ingredient from your location and then we took what we had in our location and now we're relocating people to us by attraction instead of having to chase them all over the place. Um, I don't know about you, but if you, if, so when I go to a store to look and somebody has to kind of help you, I, I'm just looking and they go, no problem. They walk off. Um, that don't make me feel warm and fuzzy. When they say, you know what? I was just looking whenever I found my wife, I get it. Chances are, though, you're going to find something you like while you're in here. And I want you to know I'm going to be right over there. I'm not going to bother you, but I'll be right over there. And when you find something you think you're interested in, you let me know, and I'm going to be sure that you know everything you need to know about it. Because I don't want to get in your way if you're just strolling, but I don't want to be so far out of the way that you can't find me. Well, that's the guy that I want. And I'm going back in that store when I'm just looking next time. Yeah. And so video has helped us be able to say, um, yeah, it's a great place. Let me tell you all about it. And, and here's why we love it. And then here's who we are. And we're going to be the only people, you know, when you get here. And yeah. That's well, you know, I think it's inspiring because it's simply just taking what you already know and sharing it with the world. And so many people have the opportunity to do something similar and they're falling flat because they're not willing to get themselves out of that comfort zone. And, you know, seeing you and Gwen get inside the studio and putting out content and just being yourselves. And I think that's why a lot of people are resonating with your videos is because yeah. you're not wearing a suit. You're not putting on a front. You're not trying to convey your message in a way that isn't authentic. You're as real as it gets. And I think that's why so many people are now aligning with that is you're just simply sharing your message and other people are gravitating to that. But it's now starting to go a level deeper, which I think is inspiring that you already alluded to the fact that you've got some deals that are now coming together from Google, which Good is one. coming through video marketing. Yeah. So yeah. what's happening there? So I had a lady call me last week or two weeks ago and she said, um, we're moving to California and uh, we Googled that we're moving to Tyler and we needed a realtor. And she said a bunch of people showed up on that page, but you were the only one that we could get to know because you were the only one that had videos. And she said, and I want to just compliment you. You're the only one that had videos. wasn't trying to sell us something. She said, and after I got through watching that video, I told my husband, um, I found our realtor in East Texas. And, and she said, you know, we're from California. They're from the Bay Area. She said, we never even knew anybody wore cowboy hat. Um, and he said, well, she said, why do you like him? 
she says, I feel like I know her. And, and that, that was like, man, you talk about humbling. Yeah. Um, I was thinking to myself, man, I hope you didn't make a mistake, you know, cause I know me too. And I know the good and the bad, but, um, but they flew in here, they called. So after that conversation, I got my wife on the phone with them. And for those of you that watch any of our videos, and I encourage you to do it, not because I think you're going to like get your life changed because of our videos. Just know that if we can do this, you can do this. Um, but my wife is terrified of people. My wife's perfect world is whenever she's in the kennel with our dogs and she don't have to talk to nobody. Um, not because she doesn't like people. She just doesn't know how to handle that. Some of that stuff. It's, it's awkward to her. Um, which is super cool because I like to be out in front and she doesn't. So, uh, we're okay with that. Um, but on those videos online, it's different because she knows that she's serving a need. She's meeting people where they're at and she doesn't have to bounce back and forth too much because when they make that phone call, they're calling me and I'm going to check them out and I'm going to hook them up. And then she's going to have that conversation with them about, okay, now what do you want to find? Because my wife is really good at meeting needs. She's really good at figuring out what do you want and where do you want to be and how much can you spend? And I'm going to go find it. We had a couple fly in last weekend, same couple I'm talking about. They flew in on a Saturday. They flew, they flew in Friday night. Um, my wife laid out a plan. They looked at their first house at 8 a.m. that morning. For those of you that are real estate agents in markets where you can show 10 houses in an hour and 15 minutes, y'all just be thankful. Um, the first house she showed at 8 a.m., she showed them eight houses that day. She drove 461 miles. Um, they got back here in time for us to take them to dinner. They bought the last house they saw. They got on a plane Sunday morning at 11 o'clock and they flew back to California and they closed in 13 days. And that's the only, incredible. The only reason they were even here in front of us is because they watched our videos and they said, you know what? That's the kind of people we want to deal with. And, and, and that's humbling, man. That's not bragging. I don't want anybody to think, well, he's just all swole up on himself. Um, I, I may not be great at a lot of things, but I'm a good dude. Yeah. You know? And I want to be a good dude. I mean, I want to be the guy that you leave and say, I'm glad I know him. And, uh, and you do too. Everybody does. Of course. But if... I tell people all the time whenever they say, man, I used to do this, I used to do that, and now I just stay home because I've just, I've just calmed down and we don't do anything anymore. Man, you can do nothing wrong and do nothing good at the same time. Yeah. And, 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 and tr I don't care what you believe. Um, they're all, every belief system is the same in the fact that this world needs you to put good stuff in it, and when you do it, good stuff comes back. Big time. And you and you can't do that held up in your house not talking to nobody and if you can't talk to nobody get online and talk to somebody um, because there's people out there that need what you got and it may just be some encouragement that says you know what this this deal we're in right now it's a mess um let me show you my flower beds yeah because i've had time to work in them of course uh, yeah let me show you what i did with my wife's kitchen um because we've had time to work in them um, yeah, it's a mess, but man, we're just, we're so, you know, you don't, you don't fertilize, um, dirt with clean dirt. You fertilize dirt with manure. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah. add some crap to it before it grows. Um, I think the key to this whole deal that we're living in right now is how do you bloom and create beautiful flowers out of a big pile of crap? Because, I don't care which side of the, the, the aisle you sit on politically. It's crap. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, whole, the whole aisle is crap. Um, but, but there's a way you can bloom in it. And, 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 and it's hard to be around enough people to make a big impact if you're depending on flesh and blood doing it. But if you get online and you, and you get the right guy, that's about to that alignment deal. If you get aligned with somebody like you, and I'm not doing a commercial for you, but I'm just telling you, when you get a guy that can catch that same vision and align with who you are and what you want to do and how you want to achieve it, 
then they can help you get where you want to get. Um, I agree. What, I think it's, what, yeah. I think it's so important to see these relationships because I find so many people get into partnerships with people that they don't have that alignment with. And even if the results come, they're always dreading the next conversation or they're hating it. And, and it's not an enjoyable process. And that's yeah. taking them away from being ultra productive. And, Let you know, take- guys, I, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I, I strongly do urge you to check out Racer's YouTube channel, which I will link below, um, because this is an incredible example of what it looks like to be your authentic, transparent self and how that can translate into scaling your business. And I think a lot of people are overcomplicating it, thinking they need this perfect expensive setup with the perfect delivery and everything dialed in. But as we've proven and as you've demonstrated greatly, is it's just a matter of getting started. Well, and, and, and people are, so the, the whole world is, is a scam. I mean, it doesn't matter what you buy online, you got to worry about, is this a real deal? You know, and if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Um, I mean, it, there's a lot of things out there that are deceiving, yeah. uh, really deceiving. Um, and you can deceive people in print. Um, but they, if they look into your eyes, um, let me tell you something. If you don't believe if you don't believe what you say, they'll smell it. Yeah. Um, any, any man or woman of character has a discerning spirit with them that they will smell it when you're not being authentic. And, and, and back to that, so, so alignment, 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 that's what I say all the time. Back to that place where Dusty and I had that conversation, and he said, man, your business will grow to the extent that you do. What, what a lot of people have a hard time with, and this is where I really want to help people because you know my heart. My heart is to see people be their best. Um, if you don't like you, it'll be hard for you to like anybody else. Yeah. It'll be really hard. And when you make decisions in your life of like, I'm going to part, I'm going to be a part of this business. Um, not because I, I don't even like the people. My boss is a jerk, but it's good money. You just traded a piece of you for a dollar. And, and you call it whatever you want to. Um, but, but you sell part of your, who you are for a dollar. And the world is so full of opportunity. You don't have to do that. You just don't. Um, now I'm not saying if you got a family and you're trying to take care of them, you're doing the best you can. I mean, I get it. There's play, there, I, I've done a lot of stuff I didn't like doing for a season, but I would get into that season and I would realize this is not a long-term deal. And so I kept my ears open and I had ears to hear and eyes to see and open hands and, and so that I could give and receive without much trouble. And I, I looked for that next alignment so that I can move into my next assignment. And in my next assignment, it might be better than the last, and it may be worse, but I knew that I was going to gather some things up and I was going to put them in my pocket in that season that I was going to use in the next season. And so sometimes if, if you were building a wall, so there's a, there's a story I read in January that's in the Bible. It's about Nehemiah. I'm not going to preach, but Nehemiah got called um, to build a wall around his home city. And it had been destroyed because of turmoil. And uh, he didn't know nothing about building a wall, but what he did know is he knew people. So he got there, he knocked door to door, and he went around there and said, hey, listen, I'm going to build this wall. Can you help me build the one in front of your house? Some people said yes, some people said no. He didn't stop because they said no. He just said, no problem, I'm going to build it anyway. He blessed the ones that helped him, and he blessed the ones that didn't. And what he, people didn't realize is that it says in that story that there were days that he had a sword on one hand and a trial in the other. He was working and fighting. That was not comfortable. That was not a season that you would say, I can't, I'm so glad I'm in this season because I'm going to have to kill a guy that's going to try to kill me while I'm laying stone. That wasn't fun. But the reward was when it was done, everything that happened inside that wall was protected. And there's a season in your life that you go through that if you don't push and go through it, like pushing play on a video and say, this is uncomfortable, but I've got a sword in one hand to fight my fear. And I've got a trial in the other hand to build what I need 
so that everything behind this wall that I'm building will be protected for the rest of my life. Yeah. You're never going to be able to get out of that season. You got to finish. You got to leave right and you got to move when it's time to move. Um, but you got to stay when it's time to stay. And that's what I tell people all the time. Don't, don't despise where you're at because where you're at is what got you from where you were to where you're headed. Of course. There's some towns that I've driven through that they will write you a ticket if you speed, but I got to go through them to get where I'm going. Yeah. You can't go around. You got to go through. And so there's things in life that you just got to go through, but don't get mad about it. Just understand it's part of it. Um, I mean, in the wintertime, everything dies on the top of the ground. It looks terrible. But what you don't know is what's going on underneath that ground's not very pretty, but it is the very thing that is going to allow in the spring something to bloom and be beautiful. And if it doesn't do its job in the winter, in the dark, where nobody can see it, when it does bloom, it'll fall over because there's no structure. That's yeah. the seasons that you hate. And and if you're if you're struggling in your business right now because of the pandemic that we're in, understand that the season of everything growing above ground for you is not there and do what it takes just what every tree and every plant does in that season is they go i can't grow anything pretty so i'm gonna grow stuff that nobody else can see that's yeah. why the iceberg is unshakable because it's all underwater you can't see it that's what we did with you i called you about march the 15th i think it was yeah. and i said hey mike listen i know where we're at and it ain't good and we can't get nothing to happen good um, however, while we're in this deal, let's put some roots in the ground so that whenever we do start growing, we're so stable and so well, so well planted that we can sustain growth at a rapid rate. Well, literally five weeks later, um, we went from having $800,000 in escrow to $4 million in escrow. And the only reason we could do that is because I had an alignment with you that helped the marketing side, which gave us the business. And then while I was in that alignment with you, I was aligned with some businessmen. So I had processes and procedures and structures and plans of how to handle a lot of business fast that I'd never had time to work on before, but I took advantage of it while I didn't have anything else to work on. I got up at five. I went to bed at midnight. I showed up, I went to work and I didn't make a penny. But today we're stable because we got good. Agreed. Rhythm. And that's what you do. That's what that that's what having a guy like you is able to do. You can do what I can't do while I'm asleep. You 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 make you take the real racer Bodkin that on a Sunday afternoon can cut a video, and you put him in front of people on Tuesday night at seven o'clock while I'm not thinking about doing a video. Yeah, I and, think that's that's what allows a lot of people to grow is. So many people, especially in real estate, are so entrenched in chasing the next deal or doing the immediate things that require their effort. Whereas you, being a bigger thinker, you see, how can I leverage myself outside of myself? How yeah. can I duplicate my effort? How can I expand my reach so that it's my business isn't just growing while the boots are on the ground and I'm in the trenches? It's growing around the clock so that eventually one day that will grow into something. You know, I think one of the last things we have to touch on before we wrap up is, um, you know, you generated quite a few leads. I think we generated 90 in a week and you had a story about how you called one and just after one call, it turned into a transaction. Sure. And it's, and that's a hard deal. So, so there's a price for prosperity, right? Yeah. I mean, like if you succeed, if you're, if you have a bit, if you have a lemonade stand and, and you're going to sell, some lemonade on the side of the road and you sell like 50 glasses of lemonade in a day, man, you've got a good day. You're like, I done made $55. I'm good. Um, but if you want to take that to the next level and you want to sell 5,000 glasses of lemonade, you got to have money to buy lemonade. You got to pay employees. You got to, there's a price for prosperity. So we learned that in the lead situation with you. Um, we, I told you, I said, Hey man, go get us some leads. You said, no problem. And 90, you were not bragging. Uh, that was one week. I had weeks we had 170 leads. And what I didn't have is the ability to follow them up correctly and, and convert them from a lead to a client. And in doing so, here's the picture. I had planted a five-acre garden as a one-man show and all the fruit grew at the exact same time and I didn't have time to pick it and it was rotting. 
and it was stinking and it was dying and it, it was not being utilized um, because I had leverage with you, but I hadn't leveraged myself with people to help me do what I needed to do. Yeah. And so understand whenever you're, when people are watching what we're saying, they're thinking, wow, what would I do with 180 leads a week? That would be awesome. You don't need 180 leads a week. If you're a buyer's agent, you need about 12 buyers total at one time. Because if you're doing a good job, you can show three buyers maybe on a Saturday, and that's when they're going to look, which means you got nine of them that ain't looking. It's, you don't need 180. But what you got to have is you got to have the foundation of who you are. You got to know who you are. You got to like who you are. So that whenever you call those people, you convert them to a client without a whole lot of trouble. That way you're not spending hour after hour after hour on the phone trying to sort it, sort through all these maybes to get to a for real deal. Um, everybody's a for real deal. I promise you the right situation presents itself to anybody at any time. They'll buy a house. Everybody will. Um, they don't even have to want to. But if you if you got the right guy in the right place at the right time lined up with the right person, that sucker will sell too. Um, I agree. And I think you can call know, a neighborhood. You call everybody in that neighborhood and say, hey, will you sell your house? They're all going to tell you no. Yeah. But if you call that same neighborhood and say, hey, listen, uh, your house sold to you for $120,000. I sold one down the street for $195,000 the other day. Um, I think I can get that for your house. And um, I got another house that's better than yours on this side of town. I'd like for you to look at that I can get you for one eighty. They'll buy or they'll sell. But you just got to get past the point of how do I pay my electric bill? Agreed. Because and if I you think do that, you do the right stuff, the right stuff happens. You, you're such a good advocate of that where I've seen it in so many times. Every time we're on a call together, every time we're doing an interview together, you're such a good advocate of zigging while everybody else zags. Everybody has this perfect refined script going straight to the close and you just address people's concerns. You address their needs, wants, desires, and you are at peace with yourself. So it comes off as genuine because it is. Whereas a lot of people are trying to pitch something that they internally feel like they're soliciting. They internally feel like they're doing a disservice and it's not them. And in turn that reflects and comes across in their conversion. So guys, if you, if you're thinking, if you get your thinking off business and yeah. you'll say, how do I get up every single day and alter people's life in a positive way? Um, and in doing so, I'm in the real estate business, so chances are that's probably where I'm going to get back. Um, you won't have much trouble. I promise you. Um, the, the people don't believe me until they go do it. My number one script during the pandemic because I called people and I said, hey, listen, your neighborhood's all happy, and most people aren't. And I would like to know what you're leaning on that keeps you having joy in the middle of all this mess. And they would say, oh, well, I have my family. Or some of them would say, oh, well, I pray. Or some of them would say, oh, well, we're enjoying being at home together. Or so, But they would have something good, and I'd write it down. And I would say, you know what? Um, I needed that. Yeah. And, and because I needed that, I want to say thank you. And, and I want you to know something. Um, I'm a real estate agent. And I know nobody's buying real estate right now. But if you ever need anything, I mean anything. If you need to know how to get your taxes lowered, if you need a yard guy, um, you need a roof, um, would you please give me the honor of being able to return what you've done for me today and serve you at a high level? And guess what they say? Yes. Of course. I didn't try to sell them. I just served them. And then in about three or four weeks, we called those people back and said, hey, listen, um, on June the 3rd or whatever it was, you told me that this was what sustained you. And I want you to know that it's on my bulletin board. I think it's, that's the best way to end it is not selling but serving. And I yeah. think that's the perfect perspective. You bless me. Can I please bless you back? Will you let me? Exactly. So yeah. guys, unfortunately, we have to wrap up here, but please make sure to check out Racer's stuff. I'm going to link it below. And, you know, this is just a glimpse of the insight that this man provides. He inspires me every time I talk to him. And I think it's going to be incredible for you to watch more of his content as he continues to put it out, because this is a guy that's not just going to educate you in real estate, 
but he does have the opportunity to change your life because his insight is incredible. So racer, thank you so much for coming on brother. Thanks, bud. It means the world to me. And uh, guys don't sleep on this guy. It's going to change your life. Go Thanks love so somebody. much for tuning. Exactly. Go love somebody. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. And we will see you next time.